Earlier today, Alphabet or Google stock introduced Gemini, their largest and most capable AI model. This potentially has huge ramifications for Alphabet shareholders as well as society as a whole. We'll talk about all those dynamics and more. What can their latest model, Gemini, even do? If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. Let's dive right in to understand what's going on here. So they talk about Gemini 1.0. So this is the beginning, folks. This is the beginning of a revolution. And they talk about three different sizes, three different versions of Gemini 1.0. One is Ultra, their largest and most capable model for highly complex tasks. They also talk about Gemini Pro, which is the one that I think is going to be currently available on Google Bard. And there's also Gemini Nano, which is for their smaller devices, meaning this is going to get rolled out to smartphones and the traditional market of, hey, I just bought a new Apple iPhone XYZ and I don't really notice any improvements. You're going to talk about a game changer here. Because instead of marginal improvements, you're going to have a step change of, well, what does AI do for me? Which is very exciting. I think that's going to be the new perspective that people are going to consider. This model is also multimodal. Multimodal. That's a mouthful. We were talking about text, imaging, speech. Personally, I've been using ChatGPT4 more often where you have this multimodal aspect where I, I can go for a walk and talk to it, you say, hey, let's learn about US history. Let's talk about the presidents. Let's talk about the, the 19 or the 1837 long depression in the United States. Why did it happen? You can talk about all these things. So it's, it's becoming much more intuitive to interact with it. Take a picture of it, ask it about something. You can verbally have a conversation. This all shouldn't be that surprising because just a few weeks ago, DeepMind posted this, I think on Twitter or as a, p a paper where they talked about, you know, there are going to be different levels of artificial general intelligence. We're not yet at the virtuoso super intelligence level yet, though there are some sing symbols. There are some areas where you can do things that n no human can do. For example, alpha fold or the ability to play chess at a, like a superhuman level where, you know, it's better than 99% or even 100% of humans. We're not there yet across the board, but in some very specific areas we are. They're saying Gemini is though is at this third level expert where it's at least 90th, the 90th percentile of skilled adults across the board. So that's very exciting. And they're saying with a score of 90%, this is the first model to outperform human experts on massive multitask language understanding across 57 different subjects, math, physics, history, law, medicine, ethics. So you are getting to this. You're, you're not at it, but you are getting to that superhuman level. And that's going to have huge ramifications for society. They do show Gemini Ultra, which once again, you know, the, everything here, you, you need to take it with a grain of salt because what can you actually play with? And Google Bard is not here yet. Google Bard is their sort of, I believe, the medium version. And it's it's not really that impressive. I'll show you in just a second what I mean. But their Gemini Ultra, which they're saying, hey, will come out next year. They're saying uh, almost across the board, it's better than the currently available models from ChatGPT with uh, Op ChatGPT4, where you know they're saying it's it's better at these general tasks and reasoning. And the only thing where it's not is this maybe some common sense reasoning for everyday tasks where GPT-4 might be better. Um, but otherwise, this new model that is yet to come out uh, from Google is going to be better. Now, this is exciting to see Google being competitive. It's exciting to see that now with Gemini, this is at least you know what they're saying that it can do. You can give it a physics problem. You can show how you answered it. And then it can tell you, this is what you did right and wrong. And here's how you would fix it. This is what happens when you cross over that 90th percentile. They also talk about 90th percentile encoding, solving rate when checking and repairing answers. In some cases, it's better than 99% of coders. That's that's one of the videos that you know Alphabet talked about today. That is a huge development. So you're going to start seeing this sort of, and, and Peter Thiel, famous investor, has talked about this for several decades, where you're going to see this continued acceleration in the world of the digital world. The physical world is late to respond, partly because of bureaucracy, partly because of investments that are required, and it's harder. But I think this means with these advents, with AI, you're going to just see continued acceleration with you know, when you can have an AI in your pocket help you with various different things, it's just everything accelerates the pace of building new things. They also showed an example where you can say, hey, here are two different, you know, things I just drew. 
which one would be faster and with an audio response. So you can ask it with an audio and then you'd get an audio response. Oh, the car on the right would be faster because it's more aerodynamic. Really impressive where you're going with this technology, where where they're saying Google is today. I'd personally like to play with it. Is this a new era? I believe it is. I think Google does have an advantage because they already have billions of users. So they're going to roll this out across their Gmail users, across their YouTube users, across their, you know, their search users. And so people that that is a leg up. So even if you don't have, let's say the, the most cutting edge model, they claim they do now. We'll see. Even if you don't, though, having that distribution is an advantage just because you can roll it out to more people and people can say, oh, well, why would I try this other thing? I don't I don't know if I actually need that last five percent. But you are seeing this arms race to get to super intelligence. That is very clear. We are likely going to see. I, I think the probability of super intelligence has gone up. We will likely see it, I believe, this next decade. That's what I think we're going to see. And what does that mean for society? You know, huge ramifications. I think longer term, you know, we're, we're talking about short term with Gemini. We're talking about longer term, five, 10 years out. I think it's it start manifesting itself in the physical world with with things that, you know, people don't want to do. That should be easily replaced with, you know, intelligent bots where you say, hey, let's just pick let's pick strawberries and then you can move on to another crop, you know. And, and so that type of dynamic um, where you see it manifest itself in the physical world, I think that's going to take longer just because it's harder. But I think you will see it played out. I also think, as I already expressed, we do get to super intelligence. You see Sam Altman from OpenAI saying, yeah, GPT-4, that's going to be quaint. The model that we're going to launch next year and keep in mind, GPT-4 came out earlier this year. So Google saying, hey, the model that we're going to launch next year competes with the model that GPT launched, the you know, la you know, at the beginning of this year. So it's not really like an apples to apples race here, especially when ChatGPT at OpenAI is like, yeah, we're, we have something that's going to blow that out of the water in a few months. Either way, I think a key lesson that you want to think about here is there's this race to build intelligence and you want to figure out how am I going to align myself with that race? And I'm personally doing it as a co-founder of AI Ticker Chat, where I'm trying to help, you know, democratize access and understanding of researching companies, trying to find compelling investments. And, you know, here it is, this with AI Ticker Chat, it can leverage whatever AI model is available to the public, plug it in and say, hey, you know, what do you think of this company? You know, we we recently launched AI Predict so you can get a range of possible outcomes. That's only going to get better over time as the new models come out, you know, and they become even more affordable. That cost and the accuracy that all benefit benefits the end consumer. And so we're very excited with AI ticker chat. We also recently launched a, a GPT that's for the premium uh, uh, open AI users or chat GPT plus users. So that that's an example where you can just try playing around and plugging, you know, asking questions about financials. But our key product is at AITickerChat.com. Once again, that's first free month uh, just to try it out, to ask questions, to see, you know, what, what can this do? Because this is the revolution. But it is important to be mindful that a lot of businesses are going to be disrupted. And I think that's that's broadly something to consider here, which is that you're going to have three baskets. You're going to have the companies that are going to be disrupted. You're going to have the companies that can say, hey, I'm indifferent. My business, maybe it's insurance, maybe it's a medical product, maybe it's a payments related business. I'm indifferent to this. This is very exciting. Maybe it helps my customers, but by and large, it doesn't dramatically change my destiny. And then you're going to have some companies that are going to turn into turbocharged, you know, superpowers with AI where they're going to say, hey, I can now offer products that are cheaper and better than the existing market. So I think you really should think about every investment right now going into one of those three buckets because this is an AI revolution. When you think about Google, historically, it's really been an advertising business. 90% plus of their revenue advertising. So that's going to be a question. How do users interact? Are they going to be going to a search bar or is it going to be a conversational with an AI? Will Google be as successful? as they have been in the past. That is a huge uncertainty. So I think I'm a Google shareholder in, in full disclosure, but it's not a super high conviction position because it's not 100% clear to me yet which basket it's going to go into. They might have, they might ultimately develop an even better AI that clearly puts, you know, ChatGPT to shame. 
I look forward to it. I look forward to being able to play with it. So far, I have it. So far, there's nothing, you know, that I can play with where I go, wow, this is this is really dramatically better than what what uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT has launched. But I, I look at this and say, Google is in that first bucket of you have a legacy advertising business, arguably one of the greatest investments, one of the greatest business models humanity has ever seen. So good that Google was paying Apple billions of dollars every year effectively as a bribe to remain the number one search, you know, on the phone, on their smartphones. That I don't I don't think the status quo will last. I think you are going to see huge disruptions. The question is, how do you play it out? You know, how does this play it out? And you take it one quarter at a time. How do you get access to Gemini? Because this is very exciting. So I asked Google's Bard, you know, is Gemini available to the public yet? And look, it's giving me a baloney answer. It's talking about a crypto exchange, Gemini.com. And the reality is Gemini Ultra is expected to come next year. There are other models which are less capable. That's going to be available through Bard and through their Pixel 8 phones. I'm excited about that. I'm excited that the smartphone revolution is going to see this sort of next step where it's AI first. But I, you know, I look at this and, you know, there's a reason why Google stock, even though this is quite a headline saying, hey, we think you know, we, we have crossed this threshold of 90% experts. This is very powerful. But the uncertainty is how come you haven't rolled it out so that developers of all types can start building on it? That is, you know, that's the question of like, well, wait a second. This is really cool, but why is the stock not ripping on it? Well, it's because you see OpenAI and they're just pressing, pressing ahead. They're saying, hey, the next model, we're going to launch that in a couple months. That's going to be even better than this. That's that's the general expectation right now. And by the way, you can easily leverage what a OpenAI is doing through their their API, whereas Google, you know, there's this sort of handcuff process and it's it's an evolving dynamic. Are you going to be required, let's say, to use Google's cloud? Will will Google have such a powerful AI that people will automatically go to the cloud and say, hey, this will become a tailwind for their cloud business in the last quarter, I'd argue Google's cloud reported a deceleration in growth, which reflects that Microsoft's cloud and their alignment with OpenAI was a winning strategy. So from their position, you know, where they're not having this, you know, open ecosystem of developers building with Gemini Ultra, you know, that their most powerful model, it does make me consider that these new business models, you know, are just going to say, hey, let's just build with what what is available. And so they are going to, you know, in my opinion, so far, they've been left in the dust based on how they've executed. I think they should have rolled something out months ago and said, hey, it's not perfect yet, but here it is. Let's just keep iterating very much, very much how OpenAI is. OpenAI treats this like a startup. They they goof, they make mistakes. They say, hey, we have to stop, you know, letting in new users. Oh, you know, we're moving so fast. Maybe we'll fire the CEO. This is, that is like a startup, but that's how you execute and build stuff. Google's like the old, you know, old mentality. Oh, we got to, Make sure this is super safe and you know, can translate into all these languages. And let's, you know, do this sexy presentation and show these cool. It's a blue rubber ducky. You know, they show this video of how it, it can identify these things. It's just just ship it. Just you should have shipped this months ago and you should have made it available to the community. So I I'm, I'm thinking about Google and I just want to see more execution, more adoption. Personally, I'm very excited about this AI revolution is there are clearly going to be huge winners and disruption. It's going to be more important than ever to be mindful of the changing fundamentals and economic landscape at Unrivaled Investing. I share an exclusive weekly letter on the best companies I can find, and I expect to be raising pricing by the end of the month for the premium tier. If you're interested in following along, go to UnrivaledInvesting.com. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks so much for tuning in.